Why didn't you just oh, make good coffee? coffee. <laughs> it's nine nine forty four over here. Oh yeah, that's true. It's nine forty four. It's coffee. never too late for coffee. Coffee. <laughs> well, it is if you're trying to sleep. Do that coffee nasty stuff. Coffee. Yeah. Like right, I so love I ended up coffee. Making like a like a. Um, I brought it over to Word because it made it. I was able to um, make the color legend so that I can start. Um, oh, oh yeah, like the version of the pages that we showed last time. Like this time, it's on Word. This time, I thought it'd be better if we all just went through it together and, and kind of showed like how how we would do it. Um, this one's like pages in cell text but since it has all these color lines at the top it became 11 pages holy crap i actually yawned <laughs> but basically we're just going to go through it and you see the color legend up here that's what we're going to be marking all the things as we're going to have um anything i put location most things don't have location but i think it's a good idea just to make sure you remember each location so if anybody wants to like, I don't know, kind of call out some of the things. <laughs> See, like rushing back and forth would be considered a stunt, like I said last time, because that could be, um, they could hit into something and that would that could be dangerous. So anything that's more than just walking, you want to put it as a stunt. Anybody want to point out anything? <laughs> We're all observing, honey. We're reading attentively. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> just so quiet. I know Check. it's a different than what we normally do. Scream <laughs> over each other. Wouldn't live frog <laughs> and be the animal? Wait. It, yeah, I have animal hand. I have it over here on the left. I just I didn't put it up in there because I don't really think I have because Word they, only has so many like these colors right here. So I started running out and I was like, well, what's the main things that I have? Oh, they would not be livestock. It would be ammo. Like, wouldn't it be? Uh, I just saw that on uh, on scripts. A lot of scripts just say livestock because any kind of animal. So I don't know. Some scripts say animal. Some scripts say livestock. Again, Same difference, could, really. But again, I could be basically reading from a Canadian side, so that's yeah, that's true. It could be different. We might do that at some point is just see like main differences between American and international if we can find it, which is probably like a little hard, but we'll see. Like this would be a prop because she's interacting with it. Child one would be another character. I would say put transport on there too. Man, I can't. Remember. On the uh, lift on the list on the left. Yeah. Do we have a transport in this one? I don't think I we have do. vehicles. I think that is that what. No vehicles. Oh yeah, vehicles. Really have, yeah. No, that would be different from transport because it's v if it's a prop vehicle, or if it's a transport. Oh, uh, like if it's uh, a film, or if it's just used to carry equipment. Yeah, carry equipment or carry the talent. Gotcha. Um, the kitchen. Yeah, I'll add that later. It's I'll have to put another uh, bar down here or something, or just like take away some of this. And I'm just being picky now. It's like it should be locations with an S. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just taking me a picky. lot of work here. Eh? What? All the, all the little the breakdowns and the writing and the, you know yeah. it. It ends up being like you think about it, but like one movie, it's the amount of people and the amount of work. It's crazy. You start seeing why it's so much money and why there's so many different people that you're needed because there's just so much you have to do. Yeah, it's crazy. It's really cool. I mean, on a small scale, you can get away with like a little bit less, but it's still grueling. It's crazy. And, and it's super cool. How yeah, like we saw we saw the behind the scenes of like what it was less than 15 minutes of a short and it was still three whole days of filming like eight to ten hours it was still a lot of equipment a lot of people going back and forth they were like i think it was 20 to 30 people it was just a seven minute short 
and there yeah, were like was... 30 or 40 people inside the one room and then on the next room you had all the people trying to like do the food and uh catering and all that and you should have a certain section just for the crew as well where not not uh well oh yeah no 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 we're this is for departments this isn't for like oh um necessarily like oh this is cast this is crew this is this is for like all all of it is crew these are just for like the main departments and what they're going to be in charge of so if it's um like oh the props would be a part of the crew or make or makeup design would be a part of the crew it's it just, just the departments oh, okay it, it just makes me up when it said location and vehicles that's what confused me there yeah because location there's a, a part of the crew that's going to be in charge of yep. the locations and stuff location pas yeah yeah but so this is just to separate pretty much like Okay, so this department's going to be in charge of these things. This part, this department's going to be in charge of those things. You yep. know, everything in red, everything blue. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, fair enough. Just me being a nitpicker. Okay. Yeah, but anyone anyway, can like you know call it as we go. Yeah, if you have questions, comments, concerns. Yeah, just like thinking, I guess, like because like it doesn't seem like a lot, but. You know, so many like plates do you want to mark because it's just like, just make sure you have it. You know what I mean? Oh, because wouldn't that be a prop? Yeah, yeah it would yeah, be a prop. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, and that's also because we didn't separate them into eighths because of the stupid ruler thing you can find. But you're also supposed to separate oh, yeah, them into eighths. Yeah, I wonder eights. if it has it like that. Yeah, because you would put that on here. You'd put that on the under the page count. You would put um, how, how many units it is. And that would help you calculate how much time it would take to shoot each part and how much of it you would be shooting each day. Yeah. Yeah, every job's kind of like has a lot. Thinking about that. Yeah, there's so much more to it than you would think just from like looking at a Sure. Yeah, but when I mean it's like one of those things like you go there and you go to set and you see a bunch of stuff and you realize there's so much more to it than you think, but then each department there's so much more to it than you think in every single mm -hmm. one. It's just crazy. And super cool. And that's like it's one of those like you can never know too much. There's always something more you can know. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and especially with technology, like it's constantly changing. Wow. And, and storylines. And plot developments and ideas and you know coming up with new genres existing them, every day changing. yeah i mean if it stayed the same then i guess it wouldn't be foam so i do have a vehicle yeah. and like i've been saying for a while like if you think about it, it's crazy that film is only like 100 years old really it's pretty young it's pretty new i have the color kind of yeah But like so many people watch it. Um, so many. And then since the um, since the scene changed right here, we would also start marking everything again. And I'm guessing David right here box on the left so that it's all like recapped. What was that? So you highlight it all in the right, and in the box in the left, you kind of write down the list of stuffs. Yeah. So in the left, like um, anytime you have a scene change, like so I have it go from interior Moore's kitchen all the way down to the next one. Uh, we would take that, everything from that chunk and put it in here and it would be um, however many eighths it is, which is like a page and a half or whatever that was. Um, what cast members are needed for that scene, props, all that stuff. And you'd mark it over here. You'd like go through and be like, okay, there's the blue thing. And then you mark it as watch. 
and you do that for each um, scene change. So for the exterior yard, even though it's just a few things, it's like a real quick clip, I would put another breakdown sheet on the left for that. And each, each scene you change, you always do a new sheet so you know um, what's needed on each scene. That makes sense because they oftentimes shoot out of sequence. So you'd have to have each one for the scenes for it to match up, I'm guessing, properly. Yep. And it's like you need to make sure you know who who is needed. Like David is needed in all three, but the, the wife and the kids are only needed for the first part. Um, so that's another thing. If you can, you know, whatever their schedules line up to be, you could do David first or, or second, depending on um, what the schedules are like. Yeah. And then just like we needed the prop in the first one, the bottle of water, but we still need it in the second one too. So that would be marked again. Oh, and his watch. Actually, watch might be. Would that be a costume? That would be pro uh, prop. If it's meant, if it's used in the story, then it's a prop. But if it's not in, like, it's not used in the story, then it would be. Uh, it would be costume. Okay. All right. Wait. What is it? Oh, his watch would be a prop because he actually interacts. Oh, yeah, because he's interacting with it. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I'm distracted with a thing here. I'm back. You're not the only one. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make sure I get stuff done for tomorrow, like uh, meal prep and stuff. Yep. Nope. So what would bench be considered? Would that be a location or would that be set dressing? What? What would the uh, bench be considered? Um, I, if, again, if it's, if it's used in the story, then it would be location. Hold on, let me go back to this chat. <laughs> I was just doing yeah, something. Because, because he actually interacts with it, so hold on. Yeah, that would be, if he interacts with it, then that would be a location. <laughs> He sits on it. Does that count? Well, yeah, it's not set dressing. Right, set build, dressing is just something that's how like. How do you build a bench prop for great portrait photos? Oh. So yeah, I think it is considered a prop. It's considered a if prop. It, uh, let me see. Does it does the bench get moved? Is it uh stationed or is it non stationed? Station. It's like if, it's stationed if it's stationed, then that would be location. Oh yeah, like gotcha. location bench. Gotcha. Whoops. Setup props include all the furniture on stage or any objects which are part of the set. Oh, this is for uh, theater. Okay, that's different. It's crazy how different the theater and film the are. The about this is it's a lot of dialogue, so there's not actually too much needed. Well, that's the end. So now what you would do is you would go back to the top. Um, I'm not going to do it this time, but we, you'd probably like go through it again just to make sure you had everything marked. Um, but just for this sake, I'm just going to go ahead and um, go to the left side and start making the thing. And I can send these things to you guys if you want. But... Oh. oh, why is it doing that? Oh. 
and then there. There. You just kind of write out exactly what it is. It's kind of annoying. Um, and then the synopsis is, um, I don't know what this, what would the synopsis be of that? Just camera shot? Of what? Because it's just the beginning, like the, in the yard, whenever it's a, uh, I, I guess, um, Oops. In the yard could either be a, 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 it depends on the way you word it. I think, I think it could be a location since it's you know a place, or the depending on how you word it, it could be a camera shot. Yeah. No, I'm just saying for like the synopsis. I don't know what to put it as. So I'm just gonna say like Matt, we we see kids running through the kitchen window. Cause that's what's happening. So I don't know. production. Uh, why is it doing that? Yeah, that's one eight. And you would just do put like the script page. It's on script page one, as you can see on the right. The script day, um, this whole scene takes place in one day, but that would be if it was multiple days in your story, you would um, put like script day two, script day three. So you're keeping track, like Sarah said, if you're shooting out of sequence, you need to know what day it is in the story so that you can be like, oh, they need to have a change of clothes or you know, they need to look different. They need to have their hair messed up in this scene because they just woke up whatever it is, you need to keep track of that if it's more than one um, day in your script. And then you just go down through the list of stuff and you write down what it is, so what the things on the right are marked. So suburban area. I actually don't want that to be colored. and kitchen. Yeah, why is the whole thing colored? And then uh, stunts. So I think that's it in that. It's just kids rushing back and forth and the location. And then um, oh, the cast members would be the kids because they're running in the window. One, child two. But they're the only ones we see because they're running past the window. Everybody else is off to the side cooking breakfast. And so then that would be our first breakdown sheet. And then you go to the next um, scene and you would just continue, like you would re rewrite all the stuff, see how long it is and uh, mark everything that's in it, what who's needed, what kind of stunts are needed, all that. So um, let me save this. I also been talking to a couple friends of mine, like with the whole thing you're saying about running being a stunt, it really depends on the uh, on the writer or the director, I found out. You mean like if it was Tom Cruise, he would be like, that's not a stunt. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or yeah. if it's like, if it's people that are used to stunts, they will take it as an insult, apparently. 
Well, the places that we we actually saw quite a few, and they just said it's for safety purposes. Yeah, like you no, just I, call it a stunt. I, I, I agree with what Daniel's saying. Though it depends on like obviously Tom Cruise likes to do his dangerous stunts, so he's yeah. Saying it's something simple. But I get why they put it as a stunt Ryan. for safety purposes. Like, oh, it's just no. Make I totally sure get that too. With that. I totally yeah. get that too. But it's just like I kind of was curious over the week, so I was asking around about it. I just think that being offended by it sounds dumb. <laughs> I'm mean, like, really? Like, it's a one, safety thing, dude. One director I asked, and he's like, why would you call that a stunt? Or, uh, you call yourself a film director, and you call that a stunt? I'm like, it's not me. I was just curious. He's like... Dude, what a, it sounds like a douche, honestly. Is he even that big? Because uh, Yeah, team, if you're trying to be safe, and obviously, like, it's if it, it depends on how big the set is, I'm sure. Like, the bigger the set, the more safe they're going to be because you don't you have so much days. insurance. And if your actor bumps into something and they hurt their face and they get a bruise, that's why they yep. put it as a stunt. No, I totally get it. I, I get it 100%. I just think that the guy you talked to sounds like a douche, honestly. And I'm kind of <laughs> curious to see how big he, of a director he actually is. Because in our experience so far, it just seems like the the middle grade ones seem to be the more douchier, arrogant ones so far. Remember, you're seeing this on, on recorded. <laughs> well, it's true, though. Like, the, the ones yeah. who have, like, some experience but aren't on a professional level yet, they seem to be the ones that are the most arrogant and the most and think they know everything. a lot of other people saying the same thing. Yeah, no, I totally I get where you're coming from. I'm just saying from like what I've learned over the oh, week. Oh no, we're not we're not criticizing you or anything. We're just saying like that is something to take into consideration. Yeah, like, that's why I kind of brought it up because I'm like, it's interesting what other people say. Because I would well, never take that as an offense. I'd just say, oh, safety precaution. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Like the way he said, you said that he said it, it just sounds kind of like, oh, you call yourself a direct. Like, oh, God. What yeah, the heck? They, he attacked me right away as soon as I said, it. I'm like, whoa, buddy. And he's not a good director. What is that? What his, uh, what he t- talked to his actor if he asks him a question? I actually. You must not be a good actor talent. if you think that. Oh, God. I actually talked to some of the talent that he's worked with, and he is a ridiculous person to work with, apparently. Then he's not a good director. If he's not good to work with, then like that's basically their job is to direct people well. He pays. That's why people work with him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I know it sounds a little petty, but at the end of the day, it's just like there are some people that yes, come to you. For example, like a simple question. I believe Coda uh, on Reddit he asked. We were looking to l- know more about different animation. Uh, versus regular filmmaking and we asked a question about set design or costume or something and someone was like i don't see why it would be different why are you even asking that that's such a dumb question or whatever and they freaking downvoted and i'm like what the heck i didn't even if you don't know then don't comment like and if you don't if you don't think there's a difference okay but why do you have to answer like that why does it have to be like you're an idiot for asking that (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like that's right. so dumb. Uh, people always always will try to be little people to feel more powerful. Yeah. And at the end of the that's day, that's what sucks because like those types of groups are supposed to be where people can ask questions and get to know like that stuff. And that's I just really I hate not even like when they do it to me, but just like when I see somebody asking a simple question and they're always just like, "You don't know that? Then you shouldn't even be in this group." it's like what they're they're this whole group is just to learn how to do it like what do you and at the end of the day they're mid if that level like low to mid level um in the industry if you if you knew this much you'd probably wouldn't even be here honey you'd be big in some like mansion directing like a tarantino like a, a huge Tom Cruise movie or some crap, like yeah. even though he directs all his own stuff. But still, it's like, oh, produces, not directs. I'm an idiot. Um, what? But he produces his own stuff. He doesn't direct his own stuff. I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> but I, I just feel like even if you are in a, a big shot, which I know that there are some big shots that are douchebags, but at least you can say like, Thanks, okay, Cameron. you you earned the right to be a bit of a douche. Like you work hard. And you, like, not all of them, but, like, most of them worked hard to get where they are. 
and have to deal with annoying people all the time that's one thing but if you have like minimum to no experience and think you know everything and treat people like garbage like how do you expect to get anywhere yeah oh lania i'm um the life vest if they're like putting it on that could count as a as a prop so it still works yeah if they're filling it up if they're putting it uh, on for something yeah that is a prop because you're using if it's it. being used on camera then it's a prop well, it, well, well if you're interacting also, with it all costumes would also be on camera but yeah i think but, if you're interacting with it like um if it's if they put it on, it would be considered a prop. But if it's already on them in the in the thing, it wouldn't be considered a prop. It'd be considered costume, right? Yep. If it's already on in the shot, then it's basically. Oh, he says he was already wearing it. I could change it to him putting it on. I appreciate it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, is that her? Is that oh. her object? A life vest? I believe so. I mean, there's so many people. I don't know who has what, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Am I putting the wrong stuff in? Yeah, I think I am. Dude. Eee, you're distracted. See, there's a mistake. That, that's what you definitely don't want to do. You don't want to get to the wrong part of the script and be writing the wrong stuff. Okay, so it is the kitchen. And then... Oh, yeah, guys, sorry if I if I got a little um, annoyed there and petty there. Coda says that when it comes to like people being hypocrites or people being like in unjust you know like mean to other people i get really petty <laughs> yeah i get that like I i'm not protective no uh, don't get me wrong like i have defended people on set so i get that yeah i just get overprotective on people or being like i wonder what he would say the guy you talked to i wonder what he would say about this one if they're running past someone who almost trips would he consider that a stunt probably not but <laughs> Oh. oh that's okay brent just go rest dude you you need it trust me like we know your schedule oh, oh yeah like, he I um he said hey love my eye is burning me i'm so tired don't think i could stay focused i'm so sorry i might have to take a day off tomorrow to rest hey it's okay brent yeah i don't know if i could have read that message i'm sorry if it was private um i just um, I want to make sure you're you're comfortable and okay. Sorry. Um, I was just like, oh, what if it was just meant for me? Sorry. Um, I just meant like, it's okay. Um, yeah, it was only for me. I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. I won't do that again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Like, tripping technically would be a stunt, in my opinion. Yeah, because no, there's a skipping. chance you could the trip. kid could bump into the kid, or I mean, the kid could bump into their the actor. Have a good night, Brent. God bless you and your family, and hopefully you get some rest. Okay, some, uh, so a warm shower God, helps Brent, so much with watch. the eyes, and a, a little maybe like a warm cloth, um, or yeah, ro cool. rose hip oil if you have not rose hip oil, yeah. uh, rose water. I or I got eucalyptic um, oil and um. I think I got rose water too, yeah. Yeah, my that's what my uh, grandma used to do when I would have like really sore eyes. She'd get like a, a damp, warm towel and put some rose water and just have it on there for a few minutes. Yeah. Oh, oh yesterday I had soap in my eye yesterday. So Ooh. I get that. <laughs> I was telling everyone that I get um, spices in my eyes every time I cook. I'm going to order some goggles. Oh. Because I'm, I'm, I'm allergic gonna, to, to uh, cake. I can never pronounce it. That the red paprika? No, it starts as a uh, C. Cajun. Yeah, that's Cayenne? it. Oh, Cajun. Cayenne. 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 Oh, and Cayenne. I, I was at my work and I spilt it all over my arms. I didn't know I was allergic to it that time. Cool. I have a, still a rash to this day from it. Holy crap! I heard, got it in my eyes. Got it on all my arms, and that was like a, two years ago. I'd be so I'd be so sad if I was allergic to cayenne pepper. It's so good. <laughs> like I still I, I still eat it sometimes. Oh, okay. So you're just allergic to it on your skin. All right. Yeah, that. it burns. <laughs> I mean, I bet it in your eyes isn't fun either. I got. I was crying from it on my eyes. <laughs> I 
I was just trying to clean the shelf and I knocked it over. I got a freaking core salt in my eyes once. Oh, God. But, yeah. Blindies shouldn't be cooking without goggles. <laughs> or cuts. Or people that are cuts. Yeah, and I'm both, so that's not fun. <laughs> I was like, I was like dyeing my hair once and I got bleach in my eye. Oh, oh God. Dang, wow. Yeah, that's, oh. Bad. <laughs> How long did it take to like, like what did you do? Did you wash it with warm water? Did you? I don't know. I th- I think I like washed it out, but it was like a long time ago. But nothing happened. I was I was uh, telling Coda once, and this is really stupid. So please, guys, on my phone. But like, my dad had one of those pens that uh, were pepper spray. Like, if you sprayed it, it was pepper spray. You know, for like safety reasons, if you're in the street and you get like mugged or whatever. Yep. And uh, I think Sarah already knows where this is going. Uh, <laughs> you're laughing. Um, I went to get like the pen and I pressed the thing and it sprayed me in the eye. <laughs> I maced myself. That. Well, yeah. Well, oh. Last week I was spray painting and I spray painted half my face. Ooh, yeah, but did it sting? No, I May, didn't. May it sting. My eye, it missed my eye completely, but half my face was blue. Holy crap, dude! I am a, I am a, I am. I feel bad for robbers now, like purse snatchers, because <laughs> May, May stings like. A it's bitch. illegal in New York. I didn't know that. I know why it hurts. It really we hurts. Went there and we, they had some, and we got like almost in trouble at the. Um, it was weird. We didn't get in trouble when we went up in to the uh, Empire State Building on top, but we we got in trouble when we tried to go into the um, to. Statue of Liberty, they they stopped us and were like, "Hey, this is illegal here. You can't have this. We understand that you guys are trying to be safe, but I mean, I feel really sorry for women in New York. I wish James was here. I was gonna ask. I'm like, what do they do? You can't have a taser. You can't have mace. You can't have a BB gun. You like, how do you protect yourself? Like just a rape whistle, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they said there's so many, and they're really weird. There was so many uh, cops around that it didn't really matter. Yeah, in that area. Unless you, well, yeah, but they're talking about New York. I don't know if all of New York or just New York City, but definitely in New York City, you can't have, you can't have it. We learned that day. So you're like, oh. I've never heard of a rape whistle ever in my life. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. This whistle like have on a on a yeah it's like a little thing yeah, and and little... Little... yeah i kind of figured out there's I, an... I, I can just like you're in i can figure what it is <laughs> but yeah definitely... you have it around your neck and you keep it under your shirt in case of an emergency like you should, one... more people should know about them and know the sound they make so that if <laughs> someone blows one you actually know how to help yeah, I just use life alert. <laughs> What's that? The old people thing. And you, you never saw the commercial for that? No, I was, I was a and kid when I was here. Your citizen should have life alert. <laughs> <laughs> What's life alert? What? Is it like a? Is it also like kind of a rape whistle or? No, it, it, well, it's like if they fall over, they it get they get notified. Um, like the local. Hospitals. It calls emergency services, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it calls them. So, and so an old person over emergency services? Did not hear a word you said. <laughs> if, a per- if an old person falls over, they call emergency services? Yeah, they, they press, press the, the button, button on the little uh, keychain <laughs> thing. Or like, oh, they have like a, a keychain. They can't get up and um, they can't. <laughs> They can't get up to get to the phone, so they just have the little button that presses on them. Oh, okay, cool. Somebody. That's cool. I never heard of that. Park, bench, stranger. I think that would be safer to have than a rape whistle. (laughs) I mean, I don't know, because, like, that would be in your pocket. And so by the time... Are there people around or not? No, a rape whistle would be, I mean, not rape whistle. That's what I'm saying. Like, if there's there's no people around, then it's not going to matter if you have that whistle or not. 
the necklace, the, um, the the life alert is a necklace. Oh, okay. It's also a necklace. I thought it was a keychain because he said it was a. Maybe there's a there's maybe it's a keychain version too, but I just know about the necklace version. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm the way I see it is just like okay, I call emergency services, but like, what if by the time they get here, I'm already raped? I mean, we, I don't want to use that word. I'm already um hurt. We talk about such random stuff on this. I know, right? Let's go back Every to the time. thing. It's, you done, honey, with your uh, thing? Yeah, I accidentally saved over the other one, so I'm going back. I'm yeah, we need to back. stop. We need to stop using that word as well, because that word's pretty like heavy for a lot of people. So we need to be careful with that. It can be what triggering for some people. Yeah, we need, that's true. We need to come up with a safety word instead. Use a yeah. Let's just say harmed. Harmed is good. Harmed is good for everything. Well, not good, good, but you know, good substitution. How about pushed? There we go. All right. No, pushed can be literally pushed. I think harmed is fine. Same as. All right. So that's what you do. You go through each scene and you make like the, the list of what it is. And then. Um, from that, we would make a shooting schedule and you would like go through what scenes you have, how long they are. Like this one, this third one is the longest, the one in the park going back and forth between the stranger and David. That one would take the longest. And so you would have to like kind of kind of <laughs> guesstimate how, how long it's gonna take, how long to schedule for. What's um, Sarah they, laughing about now? They say about huh? a of screen time will take what so one page is equivalent almost to about a minute of screen time and one minute of screen time they say takes about one hour to film on set so that's like a general generalized, general, depending on generalized the, of course but like it's just a general like what do you mean one hour like like it'll take an hour for you to film it so because Probably. you have to move locations, especially if it's no, 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 no. I think no. no. Like it's just like with actors filming it, like with the actors and everything. Yeah, like actually filming it, setting it up is another like another hour or something you want to schedule for, and then meals and everything else. But and um, always, and always. one page equals about one hour of um, filming. Roughly one hour of filming. Roughly, yeah. Of course, it depends on like if you have a fight scene and it takes up half a page, that's probably going to be, you know, four hours to a whole day to get right. But if it's just like a regular conversation. Or if you have a scene where it's just like two people sitting and it's a conversation, it would take a little less time. If it's a more dynamic conversation, it would take a little well, more time. It depends if you need lights, depends on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Since mine takes place in park, we could probably get away with using a lot of natural lighting, and then just have like one or two lights to, to make a street light, street light if we want one. Yeah, or just like accent. Well, I don't need a street light because it takes time during the day. And especially uh, morning. The street lights wouldn't be on, on, but but you could have something to to mimic like the sun if the sun isn't shining yeah. the way we want. You have a light off to the because side some, that's shining into their face. Sometimes you want to block out some of the sunlight because it'll be too much. And that's where you get yeah, the so umbrellas or like the big. Um, you make some artificial light. light. Huh? You make some artificial light. Yep. You make it seem like it's uh, outdoor light. Yeah, that's that, guys. Does anyone have any questions about it? So from the breakdown sheet, uh, you get the, uh, what was it, the, the filming schedule? Or so from, from this, you would start making the, yeah, the filming, the shooting schedule. Um, you would look at this stuff, what you need, and you would just see like how long you think it's going to take to film. And you would start making the shooting schedule. Based Is there on like a, a standard of how long the, uh, things should take or do they just go by like experience? Probably goes by experience. I haven't really found anything besides. They try to go eight hour days, uh, eight to 10 hours at most if they can. That's what I heard. Like if they can break it down into. It depends really if it's union or not. If it's union, you definitely have to like you. I don't know the exact rules, but you have to follow whatever their schedule yeah. is. I think they work weekdays and it's eight hour shifts or something like that. Yeah. Cool. 
and, and you every every and that. if you do go over you have to like pay a bunch of different fees and overtime and, all and you have to feed them every four hours as well if i'm not mistaken six hours isn't it i think it's, i think it changes so, doesn't it because uh, i know that in some places it's four in some places it's six the line you just asked a question to me she said it um if you have a smaller crew, who would best fit to manage the breakdown sheet? I think if you, it depends on how small of a crew you have, but the either the producer is going to be doing the preliminary one and they might have to end up taking it on, or it would be the, the producer would do director. like a preliminary quick one and then the assistant director would do a full on breakdown. Um, and also either way, you would have a sit down with the heads of those departments and like, going over it and being like okay this 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 but if it's like a super skeleton crew then it'll probably be you if you're the one trying to make the thing you'll probably be doing this that's why i'm sharing it with everyone so um you just want to be aware of uh you also like it's also kind of like you have to be able to rely on people which is also hard yeah like for example for with us uh, when we plan on starting shooting and stuff start working on our productions um like our, our first short we would have to uh see which people are available um and calculate the amount of time we um we would like we would need them to be available and we also always have to calculate like a day or two more just in case you know any setbacks um and we'd have to work on that because if if you wait till like the last minute and you do it just like the perfect amount of time you might, you know, run into an emergency or you might have people, oh, sorry, I can't make it today. Like these are things you have to know ahead of time. Actors too, they can do the same thing. Um, yeah, with skeleton crews, especially because, you know. Especially if it's a, um, if it's a uh, volunteer set, people are very, from my experience, people are very flaky on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, and you'll know the struggle. <laughs> yeah, all too well. <laughs> yeah, I've heard it from like almost everyone who's worked with um, volunteer crews. It's always like, yeah, the person said they were coming and then they never showed up. And it's like, oh my God. I've been screwed over so many times. Sound doing that. Cameraman even doing that. Yeah, and it's just like, geez. It's crazy. Is the sound guy the guy, the guy with like the, the boom mic? Yeah, the boom pole, and they'd have like the um, if you're if you're shooting your audio on like a Zoom H4n or something like a, a, an external audio recorder, they would be the one messing with that. They'd be the one telling you that sound is is rolling, sound speed. They'd be uh, and and doing the boom pole like you said, or or putting lav mics on people like the little mics that go on their clothes. Oh yeah, yeah, the little yeah. shirt things. Yeah, yeah. It depends on like what they need, but they, but yeah, they, I, we were looking into it and they said like the more professional the set, you're probably going to have multiple boom mics and multiple lav mics just so you get audio from everything in case you want to do like uh, surround sound take. That sounds expensive as hell. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. If you guys can see my camera, my Zoom H4N. I'm going to stop sharing now. But... Sure. Uh, yep. Yep, that's the one I have. It's a very good. I'm trying to see if I want to get the H6 in or not, or the H8 or whatever it's called. I don't remember. I think it's H6. Yeah, I gotta learn how to use use mine properly because like, the sound's not working on mine. Same. Like mine always comes in so quiet. Oh, nice. Does it work well? Sure, it's not the wires you guys are using. What was that, Purcell? Oh, like, maybe it's the cords or something? Uh, no, it just, for oh. some reason, I pressed some buttons on it, <laughs> and I just cut it, and I... On. Does it work well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to yell at people? What did people do to you? <laughs> exactly. I can't yell on the recording, so I just have to do it through the... Uh... Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there's also the mics um what are the mics you use for like fully work it's not lots it's not boom it's more like a one of those ones you sit down on like the desk and it's like a thing right there 
Are the big talking? round one? Or the one that like hangs right above their mouth. If you look at like. Is the ones that they use is like, uh, uh, like for uh, news. Is it condenser like microphone? The podcast is, it, ones? is it condenser? Sounds right. Yes, it would be condenser, but also a good microphone for that would be the snowball. Hmm, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that would be the ones you'd use for like uh, indoor um, recording with, if you want like more professional sounding one for like a voiceover or a uh, ADR, stuff like that. But yeah, all right. So I'm done with that. Does anybody have any questions or do you guys want to, you have any? Does anybody have their log line or their? Um, I do scripts? have a. I do have a question actually, but like about scripts in general. Yeah, go ahead. So, like, what level of freedom do you have in like writing a, a script? Because I see some. Uh, like, I've been looking at some of the scripts. Like, uh, I was looking at like the other day. I was looking at um, "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" and the way they they write their stuff. It sounds so like casual and it's like hard to believe that a director can turn that into like an actual scene, but. What do you mean? Cause, um, I don't know if I can pull it up. Oh. I think it just sounds very normal and day to day. And so it wouldn't sound like the scene would work. Right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Let, let me just bring it up. Okay. I just remember uh, reading a Gilmore Girls script at one point and being like, holy freaking crap. Because I remember watching that show and being like, how can they memorize all this stuff? Because if any of you have watched Gilmore Girls, like they talk a mile a minute so fast and they go on like these huge monologues and she, she talks so fast. And I'm like, how can she memorize all this? And it's one take. And I'm like, I can only imagine the size of the script. And then I, I, I read one and I was like, oh my gosh, this, how? What do you mean? So, um, because there are huge chunks of dialogue and they're just, they go into these huge monologues and all that kind of stuff, uh, like pop culture references that you would only get like 90s or 2000s. Like I didn't get a lot, a lot of them growing up, but um, you are even older than that actually, but they would go on, I'll show you a scene, honey. Basically she talks really long, one take, very fast. Hmm. And the scene just, it doesn't seem like it would, sound natural or flow very well but it does because the scene is i think i've seen an episode i don't think Lori or whoever in it the younger Lorelai. is that the younger rory? one rory rory i guess rory Almost. she doesn't sound real to me she sounds like a fake person and that's probably oh well, she I'm sounds like, oh, she, she goes back and forth like she sounds like a real person sometimes and sometimes she sounds like an annoying little brat and then most of the show she sounds like an annoying little brat but well, it's not even just like sounding like a brat it's just like i feel like she, she sounds like an like unrealistic overly smart teenager yeah overly mature teenager but there are teenagers like that like i've actually met teenagers like that that have had to mature quickly either either teen moms or um teenagers who like have really young parents or teenagers who have really irresponsible parents <laughs> Oh, yeah. they're the ones that tend to be more mature like that and talk more like they had they had to mature quicker than other kids i'm just saying from watching it just doesn't seem like a real person that's all i'm saying and i'm saying i've met real people like that so it's the yeah. same argument with freaking what's her face from uh p life in pieces he hates the kid she reminds me of me when i was a kid but no anyway <laughs> She's like, way too old tanning. Doesn't seem real. Raphael, uh, was here? Yeah, like Priscilla was saying, where sometimes like the, the way it's written, it's just in like a very like casual tone. Like here in uh, the script for uh, The Gang Gets Racist for uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. One of the descriptions for, for like the one of the characters, Terrell, a large black dude. Like it just sounds like very casual, you know? Yeah. oh the descriptions you mean uh not just the descriptions but sometimes like the the way they write like the the style i guess so but are you talking about the individual dialogue like or are you talking about the script itself it's like the entirety of the script or just the individual dialogue for the most part uh, the entirety of the script but like the style like they're i i mean i guess i just wouldn't use dude i i didn't think people would use like the word dude or something like in the script I thought it was like more 
I mean, yeah, I guess that really. Sad. I mean, that really depends on like what uh, kind of. You know, I've never seen the movie. What kind of movie is it? Is it like kind of? Like, no, it's a show. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's one of the shows I've been to watch. Is the show kind of like laid back, or is it more? Uh, it's comedy, so yeah, it's very like laid back. Oh, that's, that's probably why. Because really... then they're just like, uh, you know, they're going for that feeling within the script. Um, okay. So it really depends. From what I've seen, it really depends on what kind of script you're going for. Like if you watch, um, if you want like the uh, or any I... like mystery films, you'll see like the script usually is a lot more serious and a lot more mysteriously detailed um, in, in certain in certain aspects. I've heard someone say that it helps the actor get in the um, energy of the story, like get in the vibe of the story. So um, it depends a lot on who the script is. It's not just the, it's not the actor really, it's more the director or the producer so that they get the feeling of what you're going for. But I've, I've heard that it also depends on like who the director, like there are different writing styles, like who the script writer is, because there are different writing styles that you can use. But as far as like, Koda was saying he, he's definitely right like we've read like mystery scripts where it's, it sounds very formal or uh horror mo- horror movie scripts that sound very ominous like they're building up to something even in their descriptions of the scenes um so to me that's pretty much like so, so artistic and interesting to me because it's kind of like you're writing a book but not really like you want to give that feel of the tone that you want for it without telling the director what to do like you're just showing them the kind of vibe you want for the movie or for the show but um i will definitely look into that because i'm curious to see uh what the director um i mean what the writers um who the writers are because i have heard that there's basically like their pilot for it's always sunny in philadelphia was in someone's apartment or something or in someone's house or whatever like it was very low budget yeah yeah it was very low budget yeah, so it could also be that. That could be a contributing factor, like just that the guy is is a, a new script writer and he's just more laid back in his, yeah. in his writing. So I will definitely... Yeah, like, like whenever we were reading our script, we read... Well, what did we start reading? It was the indie film. And then... Oh, was, what, like, 500 Days of Summer? Script. Oh, yeah. 500 Days of Summer and then Get Out. For the yeah, so we read like 500 Days of Summer and we saw like, oh, this is kind of weird. It's not formatted the way that we're thinking so let's it's just... very abbreviated there's a lot of but but then again get out also had a lot of weird stuff because it was written for him to direct so there yeah. was a lot of stuff that he but it was still more professional and you could still see like the tonal shift like within yeah. the script itself of 500 days of summer it was a lot more comedic and, like... and it was a lot more all over the place because yeah. it was a kind of film Yeah, oh, I love just making stuff in films and, you know, getting better at all the stuff. It's like, it's really cool to learn about and be able to do. I just think back when it was like uh, an impossible mountain to climb to even like consider having like doing anything in film. And here I am learning a bunch of stuff with cool people. So this is pretty cool. I wanted to throw that in. Yeah. yeah but yeah, so I'm going to do some. You guys are all uh, wanting to learn more and everything. And I'm excited. Yeah. I'm gonna do some googling, Raphael, and I'll I'll let you know if I find anything interesting. Because, like I said, it could just be that the guy is like a recent, a newbie screenwriter, and it could just be like the way he writes. I think that's it, also cool to know too, because if if that shows that those still get picked up, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I said, their pilot was at someone's house. Like literally, it's like they rented someone's house or they got someone's house to do it, and they shot the pilot. And that's like a proof of concept. Like, like whenever you see one of those crazy little uh, animations of like the old um, Adventure Time or Jimmy Neutron or South Park, they always have like this really bad animated thing. And it's just to show like what they're going for. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's and like I bet the, professional like animators like lose. Well, what is that? The I find pilot that... for Gravity Falls was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Like, the pilot like, for Timmy Turner. Has anyone seen like the original Timmy Turner first episode short? How bad the animation was. How yeah. weird it looked. Yeah. How creepy so, Timmy Turner is. Ooh, he did look creepy. Anyway, Sorry. Sarah, what were you trying to say? <laughs> oh, uh, I was just gonna say how oftentimes I've noticed like 
everyone gives themselves a hard time for like making stuff that's like eh, like not super professional but it's like you look back and you're like pretty much everybody's got that story or yeah. it's hidden somewhere you know what i mean like the old yeah. stuff that they did before the stuff that they're known for comes out so yeah just it's look at all these like imd people even like the like if you look at a new like a uh someone who's new to like directing like big feature films and you go back and see like the stuff they made before it's just like oh man like it was it wasn't that great but they kept making more and they kept looking like better and better as they went until it finally yeah so yeah that's my point it's just like it's a different way of looking at it like i guess like oftentimes they're just like it seems like at first glance like people just like have a one-off hit but oftentimes it's like slowly built skills over time yeah, and it's like they were working in the industry even if they weren't directing. So you just, or like whatever. If they weren't acting, they were just like making connections. Exactly, yeah. I've noticed. They're still like acting we're... locally or in like little tiny shorts or practicing. Yeah, you were kind of like more like other industries, you know, like how lawyers go to school, they come out, they yeah. have apprenticeships, they learn, and it's a slow build. I, I kind of see it more like that now, which is like interesting. Yes. Before like film was like a big hidden were you trying to say something before, Raphael? Sorry. Yeah, I like I think what really blows my mind is like how the how the idea of the screenwriter translates in into the film, like into the the way the the way the uh, director interprets it interprets it like that level of like communication. Because I was like watching the opening scene to uh, uh, the dark Dark Knight Rises. Rises. Mm -hmm. And I was reading the script at the same time. Like I was like trying to see like how they match up, and there were there were some like uh, certain lines and like certain little details were cut from the from the script, and it was interesting because I feel like it made it a whole lot better. But the script was I mean, it just sounded a little more like old school and like kind of like tacky and like some of the the ways the like the the lines were were like set up. cartoon batman <laughs> uh what do you mean like you know the old animated series of batman oh uh i, I no more just like the the way the the way the guys were like talking it's very like like older kind of style hmm. i think i can pull it up if if you want yeah go ahead um, but that but yeah, that's, that's why they always say that it's like three movies whenever you make something because you got the screenplay and then you're making changes to that during the whole production. Whether you can't get a character, an actor, or a location, or whatever, you can't get a hold of something, or you just don't think that it works in your film as you're filming. That's why there's always these deleted scenes and everything that they were just like, oh, that doesn't fit. It doesn't work. It's too detracting from the main story. And so then that changes. And then when you're editing, it's just like that. They delete the scenes and everything that they already filmed. And so then it's a new movie again. And it's just crazy how, how many changes it goes through. And I wonder. And there's wonder also the change many, of like, like the original script. Feel like their script. final product fits with the, the thing they envisioned or not. Well, like, yeah, I was going to say there's also the script and then it gets to hand, the hands of a certain director and he might change yeah. a lot of stuff around as yeah. well. Yeah, but there's like a, a a huge difference in like the tone between the way it's written and the way it's like directed. Yeah. Um, so, for example, um, Bane's line, or he was, or he's wondering why someone would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane and out of an aeroplane. But in the movie, it's much shorter than that. He says, or perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane instead of aeroplane. He says, plane. Like aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> very formal in the script yeah yeah it's it's just so different from what is actually seen in the theater you know mm -hmm. yeah. and I, just blows some of the times whenever it's dialogue it's also the actor's choice um if they give oh like, yeah yeah definitely in the hobbit that uh what's that actor's name the main, the main guy who played bilbo baggins in the hobbit bilbo oh, yeah bilbo. what's the actor's name the old one or the new one no, the new one, The Hobbit. Oh, crap. Oh, what's the new one's name? He also plays uh, Sherlock Holmes, I think. Or no. Benedict Cumberbatch? That wasn't him. No, doesn't he play Watson or something? He's in Sherlock uh, Holmes. I think he does play... Martin Freeman? No. Wait. 
I know who you're talking about. Um, you guys know who I'm I, talking about. Anyway, he, uh, they, I was still watching the behind the scenes of The Hobbit, and he gave. No, Martin Freeman's the old guy. I'm trying to find who the new guy is. Ian McKellen. Wait, no, not Ian McKellen. That's Gandalf, right? Yeah. 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 Sir Ian McKellen, a little respect. Awesome guy. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the actor that plays Bilbo Baggins, he gave a different take each time like he had the same line but he drastically changed how he um how he executed it each take mm-hmm. and if you watch oh wait it, like, martin freeman was the new one ian holmes was the old one. Oh, that's why i thought ian mckellen ian holmes ian holmes yes 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 because they both look old now so i got confused what was his name martin martin freeman Oh, he was the one. He gave like a different take each time they did it. He gave a different um, what different way of doing it. And sometimes the directors don't want that because they want you to yeah. maintain your action so that it, they can smoothly take you know like cut from here to here. And if your head's in the same area, it's 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 good. But uh, he they just let him do how he did it. And he they said he gave it. They said it was super hard to pick during editing because he gave such different and great performances in each that they had to like really pick which which uh, character type they wanted to go with. He was one of the best parts of The Hobbit. Like how, 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 how long his pauses would be, how much emphasis he would put on a certain word. Like he might say like, you, instead of being like, you know, like, you know, you know, and then it changes the whole yeah. entire meaning kind of. Yeah. It's just interesting no, to hear yeah, exactly. how they let him kind of like have the freedom to do that. And I also love hearing about like behind the scenes and they show the actors able, the, they give the actors freedom to change the line to match what they feel like their character would say. And if they have a lot of, um, what is it called? It, uh, they have a lot of freedom to improvise and to kind of make up a line that matches the same way, like the same story flow, but it, it's a different way of how they would say it. And I think that's cool seeing that too so that can also change the script and that also shows that you have a good director behind you because most of the sometimes the director just cares about his vision and kind of you know i can see how that would happen especially when it's like uh when it's a director that writes the screenplay too that Mm -hmm. he would feel offended if he wrote his own screenplay and then the actors in that were all like hey i feel like no one would ever really say this this doesn't feel natural so I'm gonna change the line, and he was just kind of like, "Okay." Yeah, because poor like, George Lucas, he, he's a good writer, <laughs> but he's a terrible director because he was trying to like explain to them, "No, it needs to be more." Who? Like, just do it. Just do it. He doesn't know how to explain. That's like Lucas. not very good he, for a director. Uh, uh, he was <laughs> trying to George, George Lucas when he directed the first oh, oh. Star Wars movie. He basically, um, freak, what was his name? Oh my, something Ford got his name Harrison Ford Harrison Ford Harrison Ford was saying that like he just kept telling him no like not like that do it different do it like like that he didn't know how to explain it was just kind of like giving like don't do it like that and that wasn't that's not really okay then how do you want it and I was like I don't know but not like that yeah and the poor man was just frustrated the entire time because he couldn't explain how he wanted it done how he wanted the scene to look that, which is why he like gave up directing the second movie. But, oh, I just, I can just imagine how hard it must be because Harrison Ford is a good actor in the sense that he knows he's good at directing himself, like figuring out what the character needs to be and how he needs to act. But some actors need that direction, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different style of acting. Um, but like some actors need the director to like guide them through it i can just oh my gosh i can just imagine yeah no i agree like it, it depends on the actor director relationship and that's why you'll always see well, not always but you'll see a lot of the times the big directors they're always with like the same actors over and over again because they just know who works well with them and who doesn't oh, okay. like if i work with sarah and i know like sarah gets exactly what i mean right when i say it, even if i'm not explaining it the way another person would get it i know sarah's going to get it and so I have Sarah on a lot of my projects because she's going to get exactly what I want each time. Something like that. If that's Yeah, so then it yeah, becomes an efficient work relationship. We're able to, you know, create 
what's needed to be created. And I guess like that, it really does matter the working relationship, especially when you're dealing with something as high impact as acting and directing, because not only is it long hours and grueling, but we're dealing with characters and, and actors have to use real emotions. So it can get pretty hectic sometimes. So it's really good to have great relationships, I guess. Yeah. And it's also okay. good to give, I feel like it's good to give actors freedom because they know the character more and they've been studying it more than you Yeah, are. but I get like the director's point of view of like, this is my baby. Like you have to do it. Like you have to like realize. Oh, yeah. like, if you have a specific way, like they, they yeah. feel like it needs to be done for the story, then yeah. Yes. But, yeah, definitely. Like, that you, was you hear a lot of scenes in like movies where, um, what was it? Like taxi? What was it called? Taxi cab? Cab driver? Wait. You know what I'm talking about, I think. Where he yeah, talks yeah, to yeah. himself in the mirror, and it's like, that wasn't even in the script. He was just doing it because he was bored. And they just kept Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard of a, a lot of scenes that just happened because the, the actor is just doing his, his character. I feel yeah. like I find it, I can understand both sides. I feel like, yes, you should. If you have a specific vision, you should, um, you, you should fight for that in a certain way. Especially if you're the director, like, if you have that ability, like if this is if you have a specific vision, yes, go for it. I just think that you should always also be open to hearing what the actor has to say sometimes because he's been studying it and sometimes he can help add to your vision. But yeah, um, I, I do agree yeah. from the director's point of view is like also like the director's been working with it longer than the actor. Yeah, and it must be annoying for someone to just come and be like, I know you've been working on this for like months and months, but... I mean, that's what I'm saying though, because like you, like it depends. Like, like I said, I'll go back to saying if Sarah and I were on a great page and we knew and I could like explain what I need and she did it, but then she comes to me and says like, oh, and I don't feel like my character would do this and it's kind of changing the story in my head then that's another thing you have to have with the director actor relationship trying to figure out will this actor let it go or are they gonna like keep you know are they gonna try to not be doing it or are they just gonna do it kind of flat and lazily because they don't feel like the character do it and i feel like the same thing goes with script with screenwriting and script writing you have to be able to be open to criticism in any part of the industry if you're an actor and your director is telling you hey uh, listen can you do this a little differently like what I have in mind is a little different than this and he explains it to you you shouldn't take it personally if uh, you write a screenplay and someone comes with you uh, to you with notes and they're like listen um, I thought maybe this could use a little more work or maybe if you added a little something to this like no yes that's your baby so it's normal for us to to take it a little personally and to be a little over defensive because it's like I worked on this I put my dedication into this this is like I put thought and care into this hours of time but at the end of the day try not to take it personally because you are all working together to make the best product it can be it right. doesn't mean you have to agree on everything it doesn't mean you have to say yes to everything but always be open to taking it into consideration Oh, definitely. And, yeah, and just be like, yeah, because you can be like, okay, um, if you don't understand what they mean, can be like, what do you mean by this? For example, if someone gives you a note and like, I, I just feel like this scene missed this. And you can be like, why do you feel that? Because if you don't understand, you're trying to see where they're coming from, right? Because you both are working together to make the best script possible. Right. So you're like, why did you, why did you feel like this was, was missing this? Um, yeah, I guess like, and then, then, on how oh. invested like for me it's like if you're doing if you're a co-writer or something you're going to be a lot more invested in it versus like if you were hired to play a specific part and you had two lines in a movie you kind of like I feel like it becomes different it's like yeah, different. I'm talking you get, about like yeah. script and notes and then director and actor for example like what we're talking yeah. about um let's say uh the the actor thinks that it would work better in a specific way uh the director can be like okay Let's try it. Um, we'll see if it fits. If it doesn't though, like don't feel bad. This is just like, it may not match the energy, the, the, the vibe we're going for, the tone we're going for, but I'll let you give it a shot. You know, let's, let's see maybe, you know, but don't be offended if at the end of the day he doesn't use it or vice versa. If the director, uh, director gives, if the actor gives a, the director 
sometimes, you know. Um, I think it's just like just be open on both sides, like the direct. Yeah, yeah. Open, but also be able to be constructive on being like, I I know what you want, but it's not going to work for the overall story. Blah 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 blah. And I feel like he should also be open to the actor being like being able to be like, oh yeah, okay, we can try that. Or like the actor needs to be open to the director's point of view too. So everybody, you know to open communication on set is very important. I feel like. Yeah. Don't don't just be like oh. Uh, no, this won't work. Like, try to communicate, try to explain it in, in a productive way. And always remember, you are a team. You are all working together to try to get the best product you can to try to make this movie wonderful. You are not rivals. And with that mentality, it works. And that is also why we kind of, one of the reasons we thought the study group is important, no matter what area you are working in, in this industry, it's good to know a little bit of every part because right. that works. <laughs> that way you see where they're coming from like if you know about camera movement you know like oh yeah i see why you want that that is a cool shot but it's not going to work with the story because this needs to be very like this and that's why it's good for the camera operator in the group to know about directing so they can see all sides of it and then, then they can come and up then for that. the director to know about acting and the acting actor to know about directing that and also with that it's like if let's say if you do that other scene, it w- might look better in the uh, in editing. Yeah. Like. Yeah. There's some. There's sometimes I've had an actor tell me it's like, well, why don't you try this? I'm like, I try it and I look at it when I'm in editing. I'm like, I love what I love that. Right. So because, I think yeah, you that, can see more emotion in it sometimes because it's like the actor actually does want to do that. So sometimes. Yeah. No, and most of the time they feel more comfortable doing that than the what the what was originally called for. Mm-hmm. Because they feel like they're connecting with their character. They feel like they're um, in that moment because they put thought into it and emotion into it. And sometimes if two actors are just feeling one way, if they want the scene done a little differently, it's always good to speak up so you don't feel awkward on set. (laughs) No, just everyone treating everyone with respect and not treating anyone like they're stupid or they don't know anything, you know. Or and being that's condescending or anything like yeah yeah like every uh, that's what I'm trying to do that. like if I like on set hopefully the, the best directors have have said that a director should know a little bit about every part in the the production but sorry Raphael would you like to like finish your thought because we like no I think that I think that was it I think you guys really like captured it perfectly like what what uh what I was like thinking about cool. Honey, does a brisket sound yummy to you or no? Huh? Brisket. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Okay. I won't know until I'm eating it. <laughs> anyway, um, does anybody want to share any of their log lines, ideas for either the script that we, the random element script or any scripts beforehand, like the third script or anything? Um, I already showed my little bit last time, so. Yeah, we weren't able to get to it. Um, I'm going to read it either today. We're going to read it today, yeah. Your your second um, Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. It. Yeah, sorry. We tried to read it today, but Coda had to work on this uh, this thing, and it took forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. We all busy. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Nope. Yeah. Anyone have an idea for what they, like, their story or anything like that? So my idea, I had um, the, I had romance, I had, did you find it yet? And I had a stuffed animal. And my idea I came up with was that it's a, a married couple that hasn't gone on a date in a long time. So they're like pretending like it's, um, like they don't live together. Like he's getting ready and then she goes, okay, get out, get out, get out. And then he gets out and he like knocks on the door and rings the bell and acts like, you know, so like, cute. Gonna pick her up. And then they go on a date, but it's not turning out well. Like the restaurant they go to is overbooked and they didn't um, they didn't reserve a table. So they have to go to like some fast food place. And then the fast food place doesn't have the, the like ice cream or something that the girl was wanting. And then, so then they end up going to an ice cream place. And basically it's just like a date kind of gone wrong. But then at the end, they end it um, going to the park being and like seeing like a romantic uh, sunset or something. And, and he gives her a present which is a stuffed animal that she used to have when she was a kid. Aww. <laughs> I know, right? You made it cute. Normally, like, well, most, 
Hmm. Normally what? what was you, know, you know me and romance. <laughs> me no, and romance yeah. movies. That's me and I, rom- I was trying to figure out a way to make it like not too lame. I don't know how to say it, but yeah. No, I like it. That's a good idea. Thanks. It's totally solid <laughs> and it's cute. And it's got what's called um, romance mixed with like a problem and nostalgia. It's a good mix. It's not a bad. It's not bad at all. I guess I'll say a little bit of my like I. It's pretty dumb idea, but oh, <laughs> there are no dumb ideas. Just dumb people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, just uh, because I had what was it, radio? So I changed that to a location, so radio, uh, loca- uh, radio station. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? And then my... Oh, speaking line... of, Daniel, I was going to tell you, like, it, you can only change it to a location if you're actually, like... They're using on... a radio at the radio station, right? Like, yeah, like, if you're... Re- speaking if to you're... the, like, into the radio, like, to go to the radio station, right? Well, technically, they're at the radio station, and they're in a, ra- a radio broadcasting place, uh, like, in... So, so I can check. I can technically modify that around. Yeah, you can like do a quick little yeah. scene just to finish would, like, the broadcast. The whole point yeah. was to practice for forty-eight hour, and they need to have that be a prop. So I thought you were going to yeah. need like a radio within a radio station, but yeah, I, I could yeah. definitely. So that'll be oh, yeah. But keep going. You can just do a quick little scene in the beginning of them finishing a radio show, like saying good night and then turning it off or something like that. All right, uh, but basically, it's just uh, a girl that basically puts one guy down because he's eating. What was it? Peanut butter and I. What was it? I forget already. Wow, right she's very passionate about not liking peanut butter. It was peanut butter and oh, apples. That's it. Couldn't peanut butter and apples. Ooh, and then the gross combo. I totally butter. get it. What peanut butter and apples? Is I good? totally get her. And she's grossed out by that until she tries it, and then she gets hooked. And then it was a, it's a kind of a almost crime scene because it went goes missing the next day from the fridge. Let me guess, she ate it all. <laughs> yep, and she's found. Oh, and okay. she's found in the radio station, in a corner, basically, and basically asleep because she ate all the apples and peanut butter. Oh. <laughs> oh. Somebody did a little. Oh. Thing. <laughs> that was like one hour of uh, writing, so. It wasn't that much, but still. But technically, she is in the radio booth. Does that count? What was that? She's uh, she's by the radio booth. Does that count? Oh, she needs to be technically using something to like, right. the radio. Radio, yeah, either a radio in like a car or like a you know one of yeah. the handheld radios, something like that. It has to be a prop, so you can have to yeah. physically interact with it. Yeah, I'll change that. I'll, but that's what I have so far, in my opinion. It's not the best, but Lania said hers takes place in a drive-through. It's the she's working on the log line and the format of it, but the script is done. Um, and it's a rom-com with a life vest and "Are you okay?" as the line. I'm kind of curious because that sounds yeah, like a story. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, uh, Raphael, you know, did you come up with an idea for yours yet, or no? Oh um, no, I've been like really busy with things. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem. Can you imagine if it were a rom com, like, like if it were a shark movie, like one of those movies where people are like lost at sea and they um, are about to die? Um, like every every movie like that ever, because there's like a bajillion of them where people sure are like lost in the middle of the. People what was that? Are, what? I was sure you just said Shrek movie. No, oh shark, no! It was shark a, like, yeah, every shark movie or monster movie where people are lost. Like I don't know you guys, but I've seen a million of these where people are lost in the middle of the ocean and they're about to die because they're running out of water, of oxygen, of like food and water, and trapped and stranded. And there's like a shark that's coming closer and closer and circling around. I've seen so many of those movies, um, but in those, um, I don't know if you guys have like you grew up with. Um, open open cable open tv but like there would be like an hour a movie hour and then they would put like some kind of movie like that um but mm. imagine if it were like that but a rom-com like oh you like something funny and cute 
like sort of like a parody of it. <laughs> I don't know. I think that'd be funny. Is that what first popped in your head when you heard hers? Yeah, I kind of. I gotcha. <laughs> oh, by the way, do you have your idea? Um, kind of. I mean, I have. Um, it's kind of lame compared to everyone else's, so I'm gonna change it. <laughs> <laughs> like after I heard everyone else's, I'm like, man, mine's so lame. I'm gonna change it now. What were your things? No, what not- is it? oh, mine was a, a kids movie, like a family friendly PG movie, a dildo. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm she like, got the oh, rough. If you look at the email, you can see everybody's. But uh, yeah. How am I going to fit a freaking <laughs> dildo into a kids PG movie? Is that her prom? Yeah, yeah, that's what's <laughs> funny because I like we had that as like a like a th- like a joke like oh, I wonder what this will go into and then it was like the kids movie to her and I was just like of course it was of course, of course. <laughs> everyone thought I did it on purpose but I swear <laughs> I just took out no, you did it on purpose we all know it no people will agree with us no. <laughs> I just feel like it's way too much of a coincidence I'm I was really wondering if this was the line of dialogue being generated huh what was the line was- of dialogue. No, Raphael, what did he say? I was wondering if this was like randomly generated, like the prop and the... the yeah, so yeah. What, what I did was I put like the, we wrote it out and then we put it on, um, I put it on the bed or right here and I had like... But we line. put dildo before we thought, oh, it has to fit in every category. <laughs> I mean, it just, it would hey, fit. it can fit in a family family. No, it'll just be... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, hon, a PG movie can have that. Like it just... You gotta be really creative. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You have to be careful, and you have to like know how to do it, but you can get away with it. Trust me. Mm. Like, just think of like like uh, Little Mermaid. What? They didn't have a dildo in that. Yeah, they did. On the castle? How am I gonna fit a dildo in a castle? <laughs> That's not a problem. No, so the kid is playing. They need is playing blocks, castle. and they put a dildo on top of it to make it. The castle was a tower. Ah, it's gonna be a tower. <laughs> the castle was Where'd you get that? Can you change it to like truck nuts or something? Because that'd be easier. Because you could just have. No, like- I was. I wish I could change it to vibrator. Because then it could. I could hide it. Like you know, there are hair brushes that uh, vibrators that look like hair brushes and vibrators that look like lipstick. So it could just be like, "Mommy, why is your hairbrush vibrating?" You know, or something like that. Would have been so much easier. To- I don't know. I Wait, what was your line of dialogue? Oh my God, what was my line of dialogue? Let me see. I don't remember. Oh, I have it in the email, I think. <laughs> yeah, I have it in one of the notebooks. Can you, I think it'd be fat quicker for you to look in the email. Probably, let me check. Um, elements, Priscilla. There. I, I think it's like, this is gonna be hard. I'm trying, but I can't. I was oh right. yeah, because uh, like James did a million jokes with that in the dildo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah so um that could be yeah, fun. It'll, be, it'll be fun and interesting i had i had one idea but like it's really we're, like, gonna, we're gonna read over those next monday so um try to have them done if you guys can if not well at least try to have an idea so we can go over everyone's ideas yeah. too okay. uh, speaking uh, of lania you oh sorry I have to rough no, no, no. it's fine i'll just i'll just ask it after Okay, I was just gonna say, um, would you like us to? Because in the email you said uh, we we were free to read your script uh, in the group. Um, no, no, she you... said that it's not done, um, and she wants to work on it. I think. Oh, okay, that's what I was gonna ask. Like, would you like to wait a few, like, until either Thursday or Monday? I mean, Monday to um, Monday or next Thursday. But okay, all right, cool. Go ahead, Raphael. Sorry. Um. I was wondering since like I got the feeling that uh, like most of these uh, like ideas or like scripts would be like live action type stuff but um, I've been leaning towards like animation a lot so I was wondering if like Uh, Chisom also was was thinking of animation when she was talking about stuff so Uh, Uh, it's one of the one of the people in our group I can't keep track that well. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I was wondering if I could do like a 
I've just been like thinking I was gonna ask earlier too like I, I had an idea of like so like I don't know like what if we could just share like a mm, I guess that wouldn't work because I've I've been just using like a um what's it called uh Google Docs a lot for my ideas and like typing it out so um I think there 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 is like a plugin for like a script formatting thing but I haven't used it too much I've just been like checking it out but um I think I could put a lot of my ideas into like that and and it's not just so like it's harder to put that into or it's easier for me to put that into like a Google Doc than uh, uh, like a Word or PDF format. Like the um, idea for the script or what do you mean? Like the idea, some like pictures, drawings and like. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's cool. It's totally fine. And like yeah. we said, like there, if you, no, today there's so much being done with animation that you can totally make it an animation if you'd like. We're like in your head, like, it would just be hard to explain it in the script. So maybe if I you- wanted to put like some images just so it makes more sense like visually. Mm. Yeah, I was just going to suggest maybe look up some animation scripts and see animation what- Animation scripts are pretty much the same as- um, Regular like, scripts. Like yeah, they, but just see how the uh, action. If they morph into 2D from 3D, it's it, like it stands out in the script and you can see it. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Like the writing is pretty much the same as um, okay. live action. Okay, because I was just gonna say maybe check to just see if there's any subtle differences you might need to make or anything like that. Like you okay. can probably check the uh, see if we can see the frozen screenplay or something. There, I I added the radio into my script and sent it back. Sent to you guys. Since we're so annoying, yeah. <laughs> huh? No, I'm kidding. You're calling me annoying. No, I said since we are so annoying. Yep. <laughs> Let's see if this is actually anything or not. Mm -hmm. Take forever to load. Dun, 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 dun. All right. so yeah see this is the this is the script for the frozen animation movie and pretty much it's the same thing as like a live action there's nothing specific that's like kind of just different or stands out besides the songs because it's a musical no right because they still have like a young boy, Kristoff, the all caps with the how old he is. And is that is the movie. lyrical stuff like included in the script, or is it like, oh, reference uh, uh, such and such like sheet music or something? Uh, right below it is a uh, that that's the the lyrics right there. The ice harvester oh. is born of cold. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yep. it's all caps. I think that's to separate what's sung and what's not, as I see like. You know the rest of it's lowercase down there when they're just talking yeah but yeah i mean it, there's nothing really that different so i don't think they change anything they still show like the exterior and they show like where you're at even if it's an animation you know they let you know where you are kingdom they say explain what it is but you know don't go into too much detail to leave it up for the director still yeah um yeah it's pretty much the same as like anything else i kind of want uh like this kind of came up to me because i was watching like this i was listening to like this youtube video about um how some uh screenwriters like it like um like they they break the conventional like script and like put pictures and stuff in it so i was like I mean, I feel like that could be just more creative, but I also like see that like that probably isn't a good idea because like it can, like, it, I mean, it messes with the the standard and like it can make it more confusing than than. Yeah, like that would be. Um, it, it could work, but it could also. It depends on what. It depends on how. First of all, how professional you're trying to whoever you're trying to sell it to or right. make or, if you're trying to make it for yourself, yeah, you can kind of do whatever you want, really. Uh, yeah. important the animation because, style. because it also separates the entire script in a way that it like adds so many pages that you think it's longer than it is. I guess 
to get like a sense of time as much. Yeah, I guess it's just because I don't know like how how the how the animation like process works versus the um like the normal uh, like film types uh process works it, it actually works very similar from what i've what i've seen i don't I, like don't take my word but like the like documentation like there's more um like uh keyframes and there's like uh like all this other stuff that goes into like animation to make it more like understandable visually right but the i th but like the pre-production i've from what i've seen the pre-production is is very similar <laughs> in that they start with the script they do like, I don't know if they do a shooting schedule exactly the same way. Like, I don't know how that works, but they still do a storyboard, like you're saying, which would oh, be- Oh yeah, yeah, that. Okay. Yep. They do that in live action as well. Um, and it's just to kind of get a sense of what kind of shots you want, what it looks uh -huh. like, how close the actor is to the camera, who's in the shot, all that type of stuff. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, and, and next semester uh, is when I'm planning to have us all like focus on on some of that it'll be like under uh yeah we're looking i'm i'm in particular looking up some videos to see if i can find any videos talking about the difference between animation or not if you ever if you ever watch if you have it like a, a animated movie dvd they usually come with like the animatic that you can see and that's kind of like a moving storyboard where they put it all together and they show it like how it would be and it's like it's called an animatic because it's animated but it's not like a fully animated thing it's just like a picture and then another picture oh okay and it yeah, shows like they're, they're like swinging their head back and forth like you know how some old like if they're the doing scenes. this they'll just have like little lines going shoo, 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 yeah, and yeah. Like, them like this and then like oh, that. yeah like a lot of animation deleted scenes are like that you can see like the like kind of like a cartoon where you can see the frame the pictures moving kind of like that it's like the render of the the rough draft of it in not deleted to like an, not to be like an anime uh, nerd but i remember that happening in i gotta get the... going guys oh you okay leave. sarah have a good night all right sarah good night. Have a good one. Uh, let me just show you this real quick and then i'll end the recording but this is just so sorry about about talking about this is kind of what it is animatic it wasn't your fault you didn't know did mother and father know? yes so then why didn't i know how do you you see how it's kind of just one. going from picture to Mother picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Giving you a sense of what it would be I like. I did that. I nearly killed you, Ami. You were six years old. So that's, that's basically like taking a, a storyboard and putting it all together in a video to make it play back. And they do that with live action as well, where they show like, and it's just to show how close, you know, whatever her face is. Well, I don't remember her character name, but how close she is to the camera. Oh, uh, uh, oh, that makes sense, yeah. And it's a show like their emotion and how they're feeling and, and how far away they are from each other and what's going on. And yeah. How common is it? What was that? How common is it? For the storyboard thing? The animatic. I think with animation, it's it's always done. And I think yeah. it's, it's pretty common with um, visual effects stuff in movies. But for live action, just plain live action, I think it's... It's probably a little common. Uh, it's probably not as common in uh, regular live action. Like if you're just having a conversation between two people in a live action thing, you might just have the storyboard to give away what you're doing and then pick on the set what you're going to actually do. Um, yeah, I see this a lot in like animated scenes when they're trying to get like how the scene it, in animation, there's a lot of these scenes that look like this and deleted scenes. Sorry, I keep saying anime. <laughs> deleted scenes. And because they're trying to like see how it would look and sort of like a beginning render of sorts. Batman the Dark Knight storyboard to film comparison. That's a good one. So this kind of shows you like. You know what I'm saying? The storyboard is just kind of like a little. Like, uh, like those animals on a comic book. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And it's just to kind of show, like, like, like I said, like how where it is. And you see, even like in the storyboard, they show it from the front, but it's actually from the side. I feel like that is different in live action. And yeah. it is very spot on to pretty much what they're going to do because they kind of take the storyboard and then just go with it and make it more and more animated as they go. 
<laughs> but but yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. So storyboards are used um, in every single big budget film and almost all. That's so really cool. cool. Yeah, unless you have a specific animation that you want to, uh, you can like have an image showing what you want the animation to look like. But you don't need to have like every of the script, every scene with like a little drawing or anything like that, like a comic book. Mm -hmm. Or an ant or an ant or a manga. Right. But yeah, so that, that's something we're going to work on um, next semester. We'll be looking into that. And like for the scripts I've everyone's written, we'll start making um, storyboards for them to show like how, how we feel like it would work, and how we feel like it would go. Awesome. Yep. Cool, cool. I'm gonna um but so guys just this week um just work on you know the, the scripts, whatever scripts you're on, whether it's the first, second, third, or the fourth random one. Just work on the scripts. I don't think we have anything else because I okay. want everyone to focus on that. So um work on that and Thursday's meeting. Um <laughs> Thursday, we will be making the shooting schedule for the thing we just did for that, that script. I just did. And we will be just having an open discussion about what we've learned so far, how to improve the meetings, or any comments, complaints, or anything like that. Cool. All right, guys. Awesome. Stop the recording. All right.